All right. Um, still some seats up front, but we'll we'll, uh, we'll get started. We've got a lot of uh, fun stuff for you uh, planned tonight. So, um, by the way, I'm Richard Muller. I'm one of the volunteers here. You'll see some of the other folks involved in this in a minute. I just want to uh, introduce our uh, MC. We're very fortunate tonight to have uh, Howard Blank join us from uh, Great Canadian Gaming. Um, also a, a marketing grad from UBC locally here and uh, in many many years ago a, a volunteer here at the museum so this is kind of a, a neat thing for him to be involved with so um, we've got plenty to, uh, to, to uh, present here tonight and so I'm going to hand it over to Howard. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to this inaugural event. It's an honor for me to be your MC and to guide us through uh, and welcome some inductees and, and talk a little bit about tonight's special event. I'd like to welcome everyone to the inaugural Vancouver Advertising Wall of Fame. This is our induction event, recognizing McKim Advertising for their contributions to our local advertising industry for over half a century. Give them a hand to McKim. Tonight we'll be hearing from four people who are part of the, some of the most memorable and successful advertising campaigns to come out of this marketplace. In, in particular, those that worked on Chevron, Tours in British Columbia, and Canadian Airlines. All of us in the room tonight are in for a treat as we revisit some of the great work produced by McKim's Vancouver office. Before we hear from our presenters, I'd like to share some of the memorable events and a few stories that will hopefully co convey what a dynamic, creative force McKim Advertising was in the community for the past 50 years. In January 1889, after 10 years working as a correspondent with the Toronto Mail newspaper, Anson McKim founded his own advertising agency, A. McKim & Company. He was the pioneer of advertising in Canada, reputed by some sources to be the first advertising agency in Canada. Major clients by 1905 included Bank of Montreal, Henry Burks & Sons, which is sort of neat to see there, original Burks Building sign behind us, the T. Eaton Company, as well as Labatt and Company Brewing. By 1911, the agency had 65 employees in Montreal and about 10 in Toronto, as well as correspondents internationally. In January 1917, only 28 years after he started the first advertising agency in Canada, Anson McKim was killed in a tragic railway accident. Investigators determined that Anson intended to board an Ottawa-bound train in Montreal early in his journey. He realized that the train he had boarded was headed to Toronto. Determined not to let his mistake make him late for his business appointment, he got off the train en route to transfer to the right train. According to reports of that day, he started walking down the track and was nearly hit by an oncoming train. Sensing the relief of his near miss, he must have been distracted just for a moment. He was not so fortunate the second time. Anson was killed instantly at the age of 63. This is one of many stories that shape history of the iconic national advertising brand in Canada. In 1942, W.A.C. Bennett made his first speech to the B.C. Legislature and McKim Advertising opened its Vancouver offices to service the Canadian Pacific Airlines account. Canadian Pacific Airlines was also born in 1942 with the um, amalgamation of 10 northern bush plane companies owned by the Canadian Pacific Railways. The new company focused on its first on, on servicing routes within British Columbia from the airport at Richmond Sea Island Terminal and would eventually expand into the far northern reaches of the other provinces and territories. Let's fast forward now to the summer of 1973. <laughs> 30 years after the beginning of the client uh, and agency's relationship appeared when the airline industry was beset with problems, McKim Vancouver was asked to develop a special concept for CP Air. The variety of campaigns devised by different agencies around the world had resulted in really a fragmented image. An airline that could whisk people to Hawaii and Hong Kong was running the risk of being identified as a service provider to Kamloops, depending on which ad campaign you happen to see. Uh, Bev McChesney, management supervisor on the account at McKim in 1973 and future agency um, head from 1977 to 1989, summed up the problem as follows, quote, we need a unified campaign to tie together all the destinations and bring about an awareness of CP Air as a major carrier. We also want to associate with the airline with a number of geographically far-flung destinations, easy to reach with CP Air. For the new creative director hired from San Francisco, inspiration for the campaign struck after visiting a friend's home in California and noticing orange trees in the neighbor's yard. Look at that tree, said to his wife. It's beautiful, isn't it? Suddenly it hit him that there was his camp campaign idea. He flew back to Vancouver thinking, 
orange. <coughs> CPR had already spent an enormous amount of money painting the aircraft orange. McKim Solutions, orange is beautiful. A legend has it following the successful creation presentation to celebrate the new campaign theme, a round of screwdrivers was produced and toast proposed. <laughs> yeah. Had the presentations bombed, said McChesney, the screwdrivers would have been used by the McKim staff to drown their sorrows. Again, in 1987 and 1988, McKim Vancouver retained the cornerstone $20 million airline business. Remember, that's in 1987 dollars. Uh, against a competitive lineup of five advertising agencies as the airline consolidated a number of regional, domestic and international charter, charter operations into what became rebranded as Canadian Airlines International. A quote from a losing agency representative best sums up McKim's work, quote, seldom does an incumbent win, McKim has done it twice, McKim then resigned the account in 1990. McKim's creative leadership was also evident on the Chevron business, a relationship that began in 1976. The popular Chevron Town Pump campaign with its signature Chevron Man and Ding Ding sound effect was one of the longest continuously running advertising campaigns in North America. Running for over 20 years, there were 100 different Town Pump TV commercials created. I'm sure many of us remember many of them. One of the early Chevron commercials was called Tank. In this commercial, a Sherman tank rolls across a stark white bank background from left to right and stops just past the Chevron gas tank through a fill-up. To move the tank required the director and the driver of the tank communicate by walkie-talkie. On the call of action, the driver would start the tank moving and on the call of cut, the driver would stop. Standard procedure. During one rehearsal, the driver started on the call of action, but due to an unfortunate communication glitch, the tank driver never heard the director call cut. Want to know the result? The tank's cannon punched a three-foot hole in the studio's wall. Production was halted for a few days until the hole could be repaired, and they blamed it on the other people in the other area. But the story gets worse. The prize Sherman tank used in the shoot was rented from a World War II tank collector. Didn't know they had those. At the end of the shoot, he discovered that his prize camouflage tank had been painted orange because someone on the shoot felt that an orange tank would register better on camera than a camouflage one. Again, orange is beautiful, all in one day, in the life of an award-winning agency. One former McKim writer and producer, uh, Diane Cross, expressed how fortunate she was to work for McKim. During such an inspirational time in Canada's advertising history, she shared a story about one of the adventures that happened during shooting for a Tourism British Columbia TV commercial. Bill Cozens, uh, Ellen Bell, and Diana Cross would head out to find the most beautiful setting, wait for the perfect weather, and, um, and attempt to capture the most idyllic shots. Yes, they won a ton of awards, but the trio often spent days waiting for just the right lighting, the right time of day, and the arc of the sun, and the moment the tide was where they wanted it to be. One day they attempted to fly into Tofino in a float plane to shoot one of the shots for the California Call Here campaign. They flew over Duncan, which looked like a soup bowl of clouds and fog. When the pilot asked Diane what she wanted to do, she said, let's wait it out until it clears. A half hour later, they were still circling, occasionally driving through the clouds, only to see trees and rocks um, intimately. Finally, Diane asked the pilot to turn back to Qualicum. The pilot informed them they didn't have enough gas to return to Qualicum, but had to land within 10 minutes. <laughs> Seconds later, a gap opened in the, in the ground cover and the plane dove for the opening. They all felt serious G-forces. Silently, they thought to themselves, well, that was the end. Of, uh, sorry, sounds of this was the end. They dodged the clouds and barely missed a fellow fishing off his dock. If the, if the fisherman hadn't ducked, he wouldn't be fishing today. They landed on the water with another plane carrying another film crew. A member of the crew took a photo of the group. Leaning on the wing of the plane, one fellow remarked that they were leaning on the wing in an effort to stop themselves from falling over. A great agency is made of truly of great people. Over the years, McKim Vancouver fought tenaciously to maintain and grow its business and thus protect the livelihood of its most treasured, treasured asset, which is its people that make up McKim. The heart of competitive battle produced some unique traditions in the organization, or what today's business gurus would call team building experiences. During both Frank Anfield's and Bev McChesney's turns as leaders of the organization, they popularized something called the Scotch Club. For those who enjoyed a dram of the malt, the Scotch Club was the place to be on Fridays after work. A couple of times a month, a collection would be taken up and Ken Bates would be de designated to go out to the Alberni liquor store to purchase a 40-ounce bottle of the good stuff. Once the office closed, staff from the agency would head to the boardroom and exchange, uh, and exchange their advertising and war stories. 
Lots of fun and lots of BSing took place. No one was ever busted for drinking and driving, all very respectable and proper. In 1992, the advertising agency, BBDO, bought McKim, bought McKim and merged it with Barker Lovett, creating the largest agency in Canada had ever seen, with billings in excess of half a billion dollars. BBDO Vancouver's office thrived as one of the premier agencies in Vancouver. BBDO Canada merged with uh, Lanyon Phillips in 1998, and then in 2002, in 2002, BBDO Canada merged Lanyon Phillips into DDB, and so ends our history lesson.